So just a brief description to go over more so of the technical components, um, you know, more so on what is a smart L2, uh, going over specific details within the mechanisms and uh, hopefully in a more understandable way. So just to give a brief description, uh, there is a peer network. Peer network is a uh, where where data gets feeded into the system. So when you make a transaction, uh, it gets sent to the peer network. The sequencer downloads the transactions, and then afterwards it makes a post a the state route as well as a transaction batch Merkle route. So that goes directly into Memo Labs, and then afterwards it goes to the actual chain itself. So right here, down here, this is this is layer one right here. So we have you know, this uh, two block blockchain, but um, in this case, this is layer one. So the data gets posted to Memo Labs. The state root, as the the transaction batch Merkle root gets posted to Memo Labs, and then it also gets um, posted to uh, the layer one. So afterwards, a validator comes into the system. They download the transaction batch Merkle root as well as the state root and they attempt to find the transaction batch Merkle root from Memo Labs storage. Then they do two comparisons. So does the on-chain root match the Memo Labs root? If it does, then they check the state. Does the state match the calculated state after executing all of the transactions? present from the Memo Labs storage. If, if good, then nothing else gets done. It's treated as um, it's treated as everything is, is good. This is the optimistic case where uh, since everything is good, we don't need to do anything else. Now let's say the transaction data was correct, but the calculated state is not correct. So this means that the state that the uh, sequencer has posted is not correct. So that means that there was a malicious sequencer. In this case, the validator would take the batch of individual transactions that they've received from Memo Labs because it was determined that the on chain route and the Memo Labs route was correct. They take those individual transactions and they post it on chain, which then becomes more of an optimistic rollup mechanism where all the data becomes on chain and a fraud proof can be posted in order to slash the sequencer. So this becomes an optimistic rollup in this case. Going back, let's say the transaction batch is not equal to the Memolabs root. So what this means is that the sequencer, uh, whatever for whatever reason, decided not to post the data they they posted the data on chain so they say they posted the merkle root but the validator wasn't able to find it in memo labs so this means that oh well the data isn't found that means there needs to be something done in order to get the data to be found in this case we're going to take that exact same example so this is exactly the same so we just take the data but in the case where the data cannot be found and retrieved from memo labs we take the transaction Merkle root and, and, the, and, and the state, and we see that we can't find the data. If we can't find the data, we then, well, as a validator, we'd make a request to the sequencer. We would give the sequencer some ETH to post the batch of transactions. So we, we essentially tell the sequencer, sequencer, make this request on chain and you have X amounts of hours in order to post it. So the sequencer would post the data on chain if requested. And then once the data is on chain, this becomes an optimistic rollup. And in this case, all the data is on chain. You can recalculate all of the states from the transactions that are on chain. There is a possibility that the sequencer does not post the data on chain. So in this case, the sequencer would, uh, you would request the sequencer to do so, and the sequencer says, no, I don't have the data for whatever reason. In this case, this is a malicious sequencer because they posted a 
incorrect uh, incorrect transaction batch, and now they fail to post the actual transaction data. So this means that the sequencer is malicious and the sequencer gets slashed from the ecosystem. So if the sequencer doesn't post the data, then they get slashed. Then afterwards, a new sequencer comes in, downloads the data from the peer network, and then this new sequencer would do the exact same mechanism as the old sequencer, post the transactions on chain, uh, post the transaction batch Merkle root on chain, as well as the calculated state, and then send the transaction data to Memo Labs. And if we like, if we go back, this is the exact same mechanism as as this right here. So it just uh, and then if you want to uh, revalidate everything, you just run through uh, how it was before, where the sequencer would post it, the validator would validate it, uh, request it, and then calculate it and so on and so forth. So this is, at a glance, how the mechanism works. Uh, there is, of course, more details. Uh, we've posted a couple of blog posts. We've posted, um, we're going to post a an article as well uh, so that you can look into more so of the detailed mechanisms. But just so as a, just an a overview of how the whole system works, um, there is some details, which, which of course I, I glossed over, but this is by and large as a whole, how the system works. So just some uh, criteria. Uh, there's a lot of text here, but in this case, we are still a layer two. It's still based on layer one. So all of the data is present on layer. Uh, the, the resolution mechanism is still pre present on layer one. So the sequencer gets slashed on layer one. There's the, the um, all of the uh, transactions, if anything happens, has to go back on layer one to be resolved by the network. So in this case, we use Ethereum in order to guarantee the secure the security of Metis as a layer two. We do so using the smart L2 mechanism. So that it was just a very brief explanatory overview of the actual mechanism. Now, of course, we'll release more articles with more pictures and diagrams and whatnot to explain more so of the, of the system as a whole, but we did release two uh, useful articles, uh, which I forgot to put QR codes there. But if you go to our medium, uh, of, uh, our medium as well as, um, I think we'll, we'll share it in the, in the Mitis Dao Telegram uh, after the live stream, uh, you can also take a look at those articles as well.